you for just um, thank you so much, Pastor Woody, for just trusting me and ultimately trusting the Lord. I'm so excited to get a chance to share with you what the Lord's been really speaking to me um, that He wants to share with you. And so, um, wow, what an honor! And so I don't have to explain because I'm worshiping. We're saying this is holy ground, so I have my shoes off. And um, the presence of the Lord is here. I'm so grateful. And um, yeah, I just want to pray over us first. And I want you just to just to open your heart, just to be willing to receive tonight or this morning, because I really believe the Lord wants to deposit something in your hearts tonight and maybe heal some places as well. Okay, so Lord, I just thank you so much for your presence. I thank you so much, Lord, that this room is filled with your angels. I thank you, Lord, that we are on display, not only for um, people here, but in the heavenly realms, Lord God, for principalities. And Lord God, I thank you that your presence is so tangible. Lord God, I just pray for hearts to be open right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I call all distractions away. I just pray, Lord God, that any chaos of the mind has to go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare peace in this place. I declare healing in this place. I, de I declare this place is a refuge, a strong tower, because we dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. We are safe and secure here. So, Lord God, I just invite your people to open their hearts tonight, maybe to the places that haven't been fully exposed by you, Lord God, but you want to go into those places today, Lord. You want to bring healing today, Lord. So, Lord, let this be the day. Let no person walk out of here unchanged in the name of Jesus. Your presence penetrate between their soul and spirit today, Lord, and have your way today. We surrender to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Um, so I'm really excited. Uh, there's two main things I feel like the Lord was showing me in um, matters of the heart. And one is receiving God's love um, and understanding our need for it. Because that leads us to repentance whenever we truly understand. And um, I just absolutely love the worship. And I just felt like there might be some people be like, well, why are we worshiping for so long? Or why are we? But the thing is, today I hope you have revelation of the love of God because you will never want to stop. You'll never want to stop and it'll throw you into a heart posture of repentance because you realize he first loved us. You remember I, today um, there is no condemnation, but I want to re, I want to remind you because the Israelites always forgot. I want you to remind you where I want to remind you where the Lord found you. He found you in your mess. He found you running away from him, right? And I want to remind you of that place because when you truly understand God's love for you, then it makes you fall on your face and you're like, oh my word, Lord, every single one of my actions showed you that I hated you, but you created me and you loved me before I even loved you. And so that's one thing I feel like the Lord is really wanting to highlight. And the second one is giving God's love. Now, this is really hard to do when you haven't received it yet. So we're going to talk about receiving first. Um, but giving God's love is forgiveness. It's forgiveness and continuing to love. And I'm going to dive deeper into that because we can say, oh yeah, I forgave him. I forgave her. I'm good. But can you look at that person with compassion? Can you give that person a hug? Can you bless your enemies. So it goes just beyond forgiveness, but it goes that's the heart of God because he first forgave us and he first loved us. So even if you think they're undeserving, it's a command from the Lord that you love your brothers and sisters. And so um, those are the two heart postures I feel like the Lord is really wanting to dig into today to bring healing and restoration of your heart reconciled back to him so you can love our brothers and sisters. Um, 
Okay, so I'm going to go into 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 through 21. So if you do have your Bibles, I'd love you to open up there with me. Um, I'm reading the NIV version. I also looked up this in a couple different versions, like King James and the Message version. So I'm going to read some parts um, in different translations, too. I really encourage you to do that when you read the Word of God. Look up different translations because it can bring different perspectives. It's really cool. It's like looking at something from a bunch of different angles and each one you can kind of get more into the root of what the Lord is trying to say here through his, his word. So um, I'm going to look into and pastor I have no idea on time so help me out with that too. I didn't set a timer. Um, but let's dig in. So I'm reading the NIV version on God's love and ours. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we may live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a, an atoning sacrifice for our sin. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit and we have seen and testify that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever, lie, whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is this is how love is made complete and among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment in this world we are like Jesus there is no fear in love but perfect love drives out fear another translation of the king's german king's james version is perfect love casts out all fear because fear has to do with punishment the one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And, and he has given us the command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Wow. Okay. I know that was quite a lot of scripture and there's a lot to dig through in there. So Holy Spirit, help me. Um, so one of the things I was praying, like, okay, Lord, what do you want to say to your people? And the first scripture I heard him say was perfect love casts out all fear. And I was like, wow, I know I've like heard that, but I don't, didn't even know where it was in the Bible anything and he led me to hear um oh wow fear i'm so convicted by this because when he gives you a message he works on you first right and so i was like wow so i want to understand what this perfect love is and i want and, and to know to know that fear is disobedience because fear is not of God. And so knowing that truly his perfect love, when it consumes you, you have no fear. When's the last time you've been fearless? When's the last time that you've truly had no fear? And I believe the Lord wants to set you free from that today because it's biblical. Perfect love casts out all fear. And so um, I want to just, you don't have to flip there with me if you don't want to, but that's Exodus 20. I want to bring us back to the Ten Commandments because... To truly understand God's perfect love, we have to understand where we where our shortcomings were. And 
and um, sometimes like I feel like we forget now also I feel like there's um, he was showing me that um, he wants to shut off shame today he wants to shut off guilt today so I don't want you to feel those things there are no condemnation in Christ Jesus but I do want to go back to the commandments because sometimes we do need to remember how far away we were from God and how he loved us first so um, the Ten Commandments the first one shall not have no other gods before me second one shall not make idols so your husband your kids your job your finances your social security your your um, health care your house like you shall not have any idols before me there shall not be any gods beside me no other god so how many times have we tried to be like oh well, I can't give or I can't do this or I can't because I'm bound to this thing or this this is it becoming an idol is it an idol for you and just um, thinking through that and then shall not take the name of the Lord in vain your God in vain remembering the Sabbath day when was the last time you rested and when was the last time you kept it holy <laughs> wow because did you know that rest is given to God's people? It is Satan's yoke of those not to rest. This was huge for me when I realized that if my life is not demonstrating rest, it's not demonstrating I have a relationship with God. So, Satan's yoke is busyness. Satan's yoke is you trying to figure out all the things, trying to control all the things, trying to go everywhere. But God gives you rest. Amen. And it's actually disobedience for you not to rest. And that doesn't mean turn on the TV and watching whatever you want. It means holy rest with him. Talk with him. Walk with him. Get to know him. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We miss it so big, America. We miss it so big. Honor your father and mother. It doesn't say if they were good people. It didn't say if they didn't beat you. It didn't say any of that. It said honor your mother and father. How many times do you talk bad about them? How many times have you talked back to them even when you're a child, right? Different things, right? shall not murder and in the New Testament Jesus tells us if you have hate in your heart you've already committed murder have you ever really like hated someone before yeah that anger is not of God um shall not commit adultery Jesus takes that further if you have lusted you've already committed adultery wow shall not steal shall, shall not bear false witness against your neighbor have you gossiped before <laughs> yeah an untamed tongue have you repeated something that you didn't know was completely true or have you started a wildfire with your with your tongue shall not covet have you compared yourself to someone have you compared yourself to someone else's lifestyle, finances, car, house, children? Yeah. Wow. So we missed it, right? That's her sin. That's her sin. And sin means missing the glorious standard of God. We've just missed it, right? And so um, that is not to condemn you, but it's to show you that God loved you first. <laughs> That when he found you, you were doing all these things. And I don't know about you, but when you love someone, you actually show it. You show it through your actions. You show it through your words. And so we were actually telling our creator that we hated him by our actions. Wow. Wow. But there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus because he loved us first and that's his perfect love it's unfathomable the world's never seen it 
We don't understand it. We don't deserve it. And that's where it leads us to repentance. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Oh, my word. My sin was so heavy. But you've taken it. You've forgiven me. You've set me free from that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So that's why we worship. That's why we praise. That's why we never want to stop. Because his love is so good. His love is so good. You never want to stop singing his praises because you remember the pit he found you in. You remember the mess he found you in. Right? Yeah. Wow. So um, that was a big, that was a really big thing. I felt like the Lord was wanting me to show and just um, give me a minute. Just Okay. Um, so I'm going to go and read a little bit of 1 John chapter 4, 7 through 10 in the message version. And um, I think this translation is really neat. So it says, the person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God. Because God is love, so you can't know him if you don't love. This is the kind of love we are talking about. Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. And this is verse 11 through 12. My dear, dear friends, if God loved us like this, we certainly ought to love each other. No one has seen God ever, but if we love one another, God dwells deeply within us and his love becomes complete in us. Perfect love. Um, wow. Wow. So can you understand now that like if we can't fully receive God's love, if we can't, I mean, we're not going to fully comprehend it, but if we can't fully be willing to receive God's love, how in the world are we going to love people? Because um, if you truly know like how much you've been forgiven, how much you've been set free, how much you're loved, you can't help, but you know, the love just runs over. The love just runs over. It doesn't matter what they did to you. It doesn't matter what they said to you. you it doesn't matter who they are. Like you just want to love everybody. <laughs> right. And so um, I'm going to continue um, with verse 17 in the message version. God is love. When we take up permanent residence in a life of love, we live in God and God lives in us. This way, love has the run of the house, becomes a home, and matures in us so that we're free, free of worry on Judgment Day. Our standing in the world is identical with Christ. There is no room in love for fear. Well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, a fear of death, fear of judgment is not is one not yet fully formed in love. And so I found a lot of um, a lot of comfort in this verse um, read in the message version because of the specific part where it says um, this way the love has a run of the house becomes at home and matures in us. I'm like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> mature my love. Mature my love. Now he gives us perfect love, but then he matures the love in us so we can give that love away, give God's love away. And so um, full disclosure, my mom is a nurse and she is so giving. Anyone that knows her knows her heart is so giving and she loves and she loves to serve. That was not me. <laughs> I did not have a heart that loved to serve. Um, if someone asked me, can you do me a favor? I would cringe. I don't want to do you a favor. <laughs> and so that was my heart posture that the Lord really had to work on through me. So I don't know, probably about maybe a little more than a year ago, I started developing this heart that really wanted to serve. I'm like, what is this feeling? <laughs> this is so weird. Why do I want to serve like this? I feel like there was a stirring in my heart that was happening, a stirring in my soul. And I was like, okay. And it come like literally like completely started from the inside and changing my thoughts and my mind and my walk with the Lord. 
Lord and understanding that I'm not here to consume, but I'm here to give. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. America says something completely different. Our world says some, something completely different. So what's feeding you? The word of the God or the world, right? And so um, anyways, I was being just set free from that selfishness and from that cringiness inside of me. It's really ugly. And let me and let me just share. When you go on this journey with the Lord, there is going to be some things that you're going to have to look at that it's going to make you almost want to sit, like vomit. Like he's going to show you things in you that you didn't even know you were there and that you yourself are repulsed by. Okay, so that's not abnormal. If you're not going through that process, then I encourage you to press into the Lord because he wants to show you this. Because what's amazing is just like we're talking about today, when he shows you your mess, you understand God's love more fully. And that leads you to repentance and his heart. And so, um, wow. With that, just knowing that the Lord has been so patient with me and that um, he's saying that love can have the run of the house. How, how many of you know that our temple is the Lord's home, right? He lives in us so he can have the run of the house and he gets and he makes himself at home and then he matures that love in us. And that's a process. <laughs> that's not just a one time thing. The biggest thing I really pray that you get today is just receiving God's love so you can start walking it out and then maturing your love for people and um, giving God's love away. So I'm, I'm just so grateful that there's grace in this process that is a continual thing to grow a maturity of that love. Um, all right, yeah. So um, how do we do that? It's well-formed, mature, perfect love to give. Pure motives are pure. Motives are pure. You have a compassionate heart. And... Um, Wow, where do I want to go with this? I want to finish this in the message version too because I think it's really powerful. We, though, are going to love. Love and be loved. God showed me this uh, this week too. You know that phrase, like in King James Version, it often says beloved, beloved, things like that. And I don't know. I just kind of had a hard time really like understanding that phrase. Like, okay, God, what do you really... And then he showed me be loved. Be loved. Sometimes it's so hard for us just to receive God's love. Sometimes it's so hard just to accept that we didn't do anything to earn it, that he loved us first. Hold up. What does it look like to just be loved? You were created as human beings, not human doings. So be loved. Wow. Um, if anyone boasts, I love God and goes right on hating his brother or sister, thinking nothing of it, he is a liar. If he won't love the person he can see, how can he love the how can he love God he can't see? The command we have from Christ is blunt. Love God includes loving people. You've got to love both. I feel like in the world we have this trending thing like, I don't like people. I don't want to be around people. I'd rather just be with my pe dog. I'd rather just be with my pets or whatever. Um, but that's on biblical completely. You are to love people. And if you aren't loving people, then you don't love God. Then you say I'm in blame before God. I don't know about you, but I want to say I'm blameless before the Lord. Oh, Lord, clear out everything in me. I want to say I'm blameless before you. You know what um, Daniel and the lion's den, right? The, li the, the mouths of the lions were shut because he stood blameless before the Lord. So what's devouring you right now? What, what foothold how you get, have you allowed the enemy to have into your life, into your soul? Because you are not standing blameless before the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Let me be blameless before the Lord. Um, okay, so I want to go into 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Just to look, I know it's a popular verse, but I actually want to read the whole um, chapter of 13 because I feel like we just kind of catch the most popular thing and don't actually 
get the context. So, um, yeah. Um, and also, one thing I do want to share context-wise, in First John chapter four, well, First John, he was really writing to um, this this church, and there were a lot of false teachings going on, and so he was trying to show them what to look for in a false teacher. And so that's really convicting, right? Because he was saying, okay, listen, whoever's teaching, if they're not loving God, if they have hate in their heart, or they're not loving people, if they have hate in their heart towards their own family or brothers or sisters or people in the congregation or whatever, and they don't know me. Don't listen to them. They don't love me. Wow. So what, what message are we giving to people? It starts with us, right? Okay, so I'm going to read this. Um, Love is indispensable, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in tongues of men and angels, do not and but do not have love. I am only a resounding gong or a clinging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. So he's talking at that point when we see Jesus, when we're in heaven, there's no more need for the spiritual gifts. That's just for here on earth. It's all going to pass away. So yes, we are to yearn after these things. Yes, we are to want these things. But ultimately, we want to know how to love. We want to know Jesus because it's all going to pass away when we get to heaven. And we'll have completeness. We'll know in complete. Um, so when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. And what the Lord showed me there, what are we called? Children of the Lord. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood before me. For now we see only a reflection in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. No, now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. He's speaking about when we get to heaven or fully mature. We're a, we're a man or fully mature as a woman, right? Here we are children of the Lord. And now these three remain faith, hope, and in love, but the greatest of these is love. So check your faith. So in heaven, the currency is faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. So let's look at our life on earth. What kind of faith do you have here? Faith is your currency in heaven. So what kind of faith do you have here? What kind of hope? How big is your hope? Are you just watching the news and spiraling down in despair and depression? Where is your hope, church? Where is your hope? And love. Love. Have you loved well? You know, when we get to heaven, I just want to be able to say, yeah, God, I love your people well. I love them well. I know I did. So faith, hope, and love. Wow. So good. Thank you, Lord. Um, So I want to look at um, how perfect love casts out all fear. Because I think that's really... um, Where do I go, Lord? Um, I do want to share this, actually. Because the second thing I feel like the Lord really wants us to know is, one, receiving God's love our need for it and repentance and then second giving God's love um, forgiveness and continuing to love so he showed me this last night I was really excited about it so um, just that forgiveness right and then I was like hmm 
the Lord's really been developing in me a giving spirit, a giving spirit, uh, because that's who God is. And when I was looking at the word forgiving, if there's any like English people in here, teachers or majors, I'm not, but I, I was like, oh, four is a prefix. And I was like, okay, how do I just, okay, Lord, so I just dug into this. And what I was understanding is that forgiving, a lot of times we think of that after the fact, like we forgive someone after the offense has been made, but forgiving is um, to give completely without reservation. And what I was understanding is forgiving is like before, like it goes before you. So before the person has even had a chance to make the offense, you've already made the decision that you forgive them. Wow, that's forgiveness. That's forgiving. <laughs> that's mind blowing. Oh my word. America, we've sent such a offendable, all right, offendable people. Can I say things? But if you make the decision to forgive before the offense, it has no power. Mm -hmm. So, um,. That's something we got to learn. That's something we got to be trained. God, train me. Teach me how to do this. And something that really has been heavy on my heart is the Lord's Prayer. He's taught us how to pray. Why don't we pray it, church? Like, this is the Lord's Prayer. And in the Lord's Prayer, um, he talks about... Um, Forgiving, you know, for asking God to forgive us first and then forgiving others. What are we talking about here? A matter of the heart. When we when we ask for forgiveness, receiving God's love, and then when we, we forget others, we're able to give God's love. And so, oh, this is so mind-blowing because you can literally wake up in the morning and you can say, I choose to forgive anyone who wrongs me today. I choose to forgive anyone who lies to me today. I choose to forgive anyone who doesn't follow through on their word today. I choose to forgive them because I am unoffendable, unshakable. I am fortified in Christ. Amen. Yeah. That's so much power. That's the power that we have in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you. I couldn't do that alone. That's not normal. <laughs> That's not normal to me. All right. So I want to look at Matthew chapter five, um, verses 43 through 48, because it talks about forgiveness and loving others. Um, okay. Let me get here. Matthew chapter five, verses 43 through 48. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? Are not even the political? Cool elites and different people doing that. Don't they love people that love them? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Don't even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And we're talking about perfect love. Yeah. So it's easy to love people that love you, isn't it? Oh man, it feels so good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but it's harder to love people that don't love you. Okay. Yeah. And that's what we're called to do. As the hands and feet of Jesus, that's what we're called to do. To love the unlovable. Yeah. Wow. So that's really powerful. I don't know. Maybe someone's coming to your mind. Maybe an offense is coming to your mind. Maybe you're getting a little bit stirred in your seat. Some pride or anger is starting to well up in you. You're like, what is this thing? I don't know what this is. But the Lord is telling you, I want you to forgive that person. I want you to forgive that situation. I want you to le release that to me and give it to me because I love you first. I forgave you first. Doesn't mean what they did was right doesn't mean it was okay but you're loving you're choosing to forgive because of him because of him 
So, um, wow, yeah. Um, that is mainly what I feel like the Lord wanted to share with me um, and just um, that that perfect love is really what fills us and what drives out that fear too. I think a lot of us um, can be living in fear of different situations that cause us um, causes our heart, heart to harden a little bit and us to kind of get like a white knuckle on life and so when we truly understand how perfect his love is it truly drives out all fear so here's the thing, we are children of God you're a son or you're a daughter of God you're an heir to the throne, you have heavenly access to heavenly resources Sources. You can ask and receive in the Lord's will and it will be done. And the thing is that it's already done in heaven. That person you're praying for to be saved, those finances that you're praying for, like it's all of it. Like the, the promise that he's made you, it's already done in heaven. You know that, right? It's already done. So you just have to pull on heaven and bring it down to earth. Yeah, and that's the Lord's prayer. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's already done. But he wants a people willing to petition for it. Willing to bring it down to earth. Are you really will? Are you ready? Are you ready to see heaven collide with earth and your personal life and your families and your finances and your marriage and your relationship with your kids? Are you ready to see heaven touch earth? Oh, it's exciting. Yeah. How do we do that? It's on our knees. It's on our knees. Yeah, it starts there. It starts in prayer. This, see, the spiritual world is more real than the physical world. What happens in the spiritual then affects what we see in the natural. So if we want to break generational things, if we want to break sickness off our family, if we want to break poverty off our family, if we want to break unbelief off our family, if we want to break witchcraft off our family, if we want to break those things off our family, it has to be first broken in the spirit. And then we begin to see in the natural, and that's the exciting part. And sometimes you know when it's broken in the spirit. Sometimes you just, you have this knowing, but sometimes you don't. And that's why you got to keep pressing in for it. Keep asking God for it. Bring it to earth, Lord. Bring it to earth, Lord. Okay. Wow. Um, so where do I want to land? Um, I want to pray the Lord's Prayer. And I also want to just make some declarations over you today. Um, so I'm just going to start with the Lord's Prayer. And then, because he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. <laughs> this is where we get to communion with God. This is where we get to speak with God. And I just pray that you're doing that at home. I pray that you have a secret place, a private place that just you and him know about. And I pray that you pour out your heart to him there. I pray that you, he, you know, it's actually biblical to complain to the Lord. Yeah, it's biblical to complain to the Lord. Um, everybody always says his, his name different. Habakkuk, think how I pronounce it. If you want to look into that book, um, he's pouring out to his heart. He's complaining, but his heart's in alignment with the Lord. It's his heart's um, for the nation. And he's just, and what's so cool is have your note pen, like have your notebook and your pen ready for you. Because when you're crying out to the Lord and, and complaining to the Lord, like, Lord, why am I going through this again? Why is he running away from home again? Why is this happening? And you're pouring it all out to the Lord. And then you just pour it all out and you're completely still before the Lord. And you just wait on him. And he speaks. <laughs> And you gotta have your notepad, you gotta have your pen ready, you gotta be like, have a, you gotta write that down, write that revelation down, write that vision down, write that scripture down that he, that he shows you. Be ready to receive from the Lord. I want you to elevate your expectations because you can hear from the Lord. You can discern his voice. My sheep know my voice. You know your spirit. Even if you don't think you know it, your spirit, the Holy Spirit inside of you knows the Father's voice. 
Okay, so I'm just going to pray the Lord's Prayer, and then after that, I'm just going to speak some declarations over you, and then um, really give you a chance to respond and receive the perfect love of Christ. So Lord, I thank you that you're our Father, that you're our Abba, that you care for us. Oh Lord, you delight in us, you sing and dance over us. You are not some distant being off to the shore that doesn't care about us, but you inhabit our praises. You love us. You rejoice in us. You are so close to us. You know everything about us. You are our daddy, our father. And Lord, you are in heaven. You aren't here on earth. We can't comprehend you, and we praise God that we can't. And Lord, we just thank you that you are seated in heavenly places, and we are seated with you in heavenly places. And Lord, holy be your name. Holy. We join in with the angels, and we sing holy, 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 holy. They never get tired of that in heaven. They never get tired of it. They're always seeing a new thing from you, because you're holy, holy. Your name is holy. Thank you, Jesus. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Lord God, fix our wills right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every broken will come into alignment with the will of the fathers right now in the name of Jesus. Submit yourself before the Lord. We tear down every prideful, every stubbornness thought, every set in our ways. We give that to you. We dismantle it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We command our will to be healed and in completion in accordance to your will. So your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, bring it down. We pull on heaven's strings. We pull on heaven's resources. There is abundance. There is abundance that you have ready to give. So we pull on hope. We pull on joy. We pull on it in the name of Jesus. And give us today our daily bread. Would you give us our provision today, Lord? Would you give us a new word from you today? Would you give us a new revelation from you today? Would you give us what we need for today, Lord? And forgive us of our sins, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord, in the places that you found us, the places that were a mess. Let us not forget what a mess we were and what a mess we continue to be, Lord God. But you are leading us through it. You're walking us hand by hand through all of it. And Lord God, you will bring us out on the other side in Jesus' name. So thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. We just lay our hearts before you and we say, oh, Lord, just please. Please forgive all the offenses that I have made to you. Everything that's been unpleasing to you, Lord, make me clean. And Lord, we forgive others. We forgive the ones that have hurt us. We forgive everyone who's ever hurt us, anyone who's ever let us down. We forgive them for disappointing us. We forgive them for not being there for us. We forgive them for hurting us. We just release them to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, bring healing to those places. Bring healing to your people. Bring healing to those places in Jesus' name. Thank you. And lead us not into temptation. God, guard us. Put a fire, put a wall of fire around us in the name of Jesus. Just as we ride into battle trusting you, and even if our enemies surround us, we will not fear, for the Lord is with us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you don't lead us into temptation. We have victory in you. But deliver us from the evil one. So, Lord God, if there's anything we need to be delivered from today, if there's any unforgiveness, pride, selfishness, bitter, anger, anything, Lord God, we just ask that you would cast it out now in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you would deliver us from the evil one and bring healing and and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. So now um, I just want to break some things off of you and then declare some things over you. So right now I declare all on forgiveness be broken off of you in the mighty name of Jesus, that all bitterness must leave now, all resentment must leave now, all hate, all anger, all shame, all guilt, all condemnation, all fear must leave now in the mighty name of Jesus.
Jesus. And I declare over you a sound mind. I declare over you the mind of Christ. And I just want you to put out your hands in front of you just in a posture to receive the perfect love of God. Lord God, I declare over your people a giving spirit, a forgiving spirit. Lord God, I pray your fire to fall over every single one of your people today. Lord God, let your perfect love infiltrate their mind, infiltrate their souls, infiltrate their will and their emotions. Your perfect love casts out all fear. So fear, you have no room. We break every agreement we made with you. We break every word curse that's been spoken over to or over our, our bodies from doctors and from people in our life that try to call us dumb or stupid or sick or ill or that this thing is incurable. We say, leave me now. We break every single agreement with the enemy. In the name of Jesus, I cut off all of the enemy's airways in the name of Jesus and declare the Holy Spirit to have ground today. We push back the gates of hell in the name of Jesus. So let you be filled with the Holy Spirit. Your fire fall on your people now in the name of Jesus. I declare you have a sound mind. You have the mind of Christ no longer living in fear, no longer living in shame, no longer living in condemnation. You have perfect love. The perfect love of the Father is meeting you right now in your heart in those deep. We, Lord, we give you complete permission to go down into the deepest parts of our soul and to bring healing and refuge to those places. Even if we, um, if there's things in our childhood that we, we haven't been completely healed with, Lord God, my prayer is that every person in this place can look back at a trauma in their life and smile because they've been completely healed by the blood and the love of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your healing. We receive your love and we go out of here walking in your perfect love and willing and ready to give it to anyone who needs it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.